First, I want to wish you a happy Monday. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here on your er, September 25th. I'm Jackie Pascal and I'm Audrey Bisque. Yes, as always, we appreciate your time in the final week of September too. is looking crazy. beautiful today. Jacqueline is in for Brian. I know it is crazy. <laughs> she says it's crazy. It's already the 25th. Yeah, it's the first work week of fall. That's first, right. Yes, school morning of fall mm -hmm. and it feels like it was great out there. Here's a look outside at our temperatures. We've got low 60s throughout a lot of the area, upper 50s for some very cool, very crisp. Our dew points are also quite low. You want to grab that layer perhaps if you haven't done so already for the past few weeks. You have needed it. You'll need it over the next couple of days. Temperatures today though will climb. So layers are key as we head into the afternoon. We get to 80 degrees. It's about normal for us to see temperatures right around that area. But as we're looking towards the later part of the day, it'll be warm and we'll see some sunshine as we head into the morning hours. But clouds will build later in the day. Calm winds throughout our afternoon in the foothills. A big difference, of course, from what we dealt with this weekend. Temperatures in the low 70s as we're looking at the high country. Now, while the mountains didn't see a lot of rain, the foothills picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain from Ophelia, and the further we headed east, we picked up more and more of that rain. So by the time we got to areas like Danville and Alamance counties, about an inch, Danville had an inch and a half of rain from that system. So now we're getting a chance to dry out and calm down. A couple of rain chances through this week, but they are minor, and then a beautiful weekend on the way. We'll take a closer look coming up. We know that tropical storm Ophelia left its mark here on North Carolina. The storm came ashore early Saturday, bringing heavy downpours, strong winds and coastal flooding. The fierce winds on the East Coast also caused more than 70,000 power outages during the height of the storm, with North Carolina and Virginia being hit the hardest. The Atlantic hurricane season started on June 1st. It runs through November 30th. So still more to come potentially. Back closer to home now, Winston-Salem police officer is hurt after a car chase with a shooting suspect. Investigators say the chase ended at East Monmouth Street and Old Lexington Road when the driver hit a patrol car. Officers say they ran after two juveniles who were inside that car, quickly taking them into custody. Police say they also confiscated a firearm and narcotics there. The suspect driver was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. One officer was also treated for injuries at the scene. The investigation is ongoing. 603 covering our state capital now North Carolina lawmakers are meeting tomorrow after approving the new state budget. The Senate took up the 2023 Appropriations Act on Friday morning, with approval getting a 26 to 17 vote after a final vote in the House around midnight. The $30 billion spending plan includes tax cuts, raises for state workers, and also triggers Medicaid expansion. Governor Ray Cooper could allow this to become law without signing it or veto the bill. Lawmakers are set to meet again at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Well, the threat of a federal government shutdown could have serious impacts on tourism here in North Carolina. During the last shutdown, parts of the Blue Ridge Parkway were closed, workers furloughed, and it left the parks littered. The restrooms unattended, and some areas even were damaged. Visitor centers were also closed. I always remain hopeful that both the administration, but mostly that the public, if it does occur, remember that this is their park and it is up to all of us to take care of it. And the CEO of the Blue Ridge Foundations hopes that uh, the federal lawmakers can come to that budget compromise soon. That is because there's now less than a week until government funding runs out there. Over the weekend, lawmakers negotiated behind the scenes working to convince a group of Republican holdouts to move forward. Amy Liu is live in our Washington Bureau this morning. Amy, did they make any progress in those conversations? Well, very little, Jackie and Audrey, but we'll get a better idea of where lawmakers stand after they return from the long weekend on Tuesday with all eyes on how House Republicans will vote. Crunch time. Working furiously over the weekend. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is pleading with conservative members of his own party. This dysfunctional Washington cannot continue. But Republican holdouts remain firm, demanding steeper spending cuts. That's why folks like me, I'm, you know, we're sticking to our guns and all of a sudden we're the bad guys because we want to balance our budget. The House will push ahead this week, voting on a handful of a dozen bills to fund government agencies and a temporary budget extension without the guaranteed votes needed to pass. We take the perspective that we'd rather get 80% of something 
than 100% of nothing. As some Republicans plan to work instead with members across the aisle, President Biden is urging lawmakers stick to promises made in the debt ceiling deal. Funding the government is one of those basic responsibilities of Congress. As the country braces for a shutdown. And it's time for the Republicans to start doing the job America elected them to do. Yeah, and the Biden administration is planning to highlight some of the impacts of a government shutdown. Today, Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack will talk about the some 7 million women and children who rely on government nutrition programs who could lose their coverage. Back to you. And Amy, you mentioned how some Republicans are planning to work with fellow Democrats. What would that look like? Right, so that would be composed of a bipartisan group of lawmakers so that would have uh, moderate Republicans, some Democrats as well. They're collectively known as the Problem Solvers Caucus, and they're pushing forward what's called a discharge petition. That petition would force bills to the floor for a vote without the usual procedural hurdles. It would also bypass all of those conservative holdouts and fund a number of priorities that includes Ukraine, the FAA, as well as the military. Back to you.